Have you noticed how AI is changing the world of search? Well, there's no better example than yesterday's release of Sonar by Perplexity, which they claim to be the best AI answer engine, meaning it works a little bit like ChatGPT, but it's gonna fit real-time, real-world results. So if you're building an app where you want to fetch real-time, real-world results and return them to your users, this is the video for you. We're gonna be diving into the developer docs and adding a Perplexity Sonar into a Bubble.io app using no code, or at least a little bit of JSON, but I'm gonna walk us through every step. Let's start with a demo, because this is going to show why, at least for the moment, Sonar is ahead of the rest of AI search, LLMs, fetching real world data. Uh, for example, we can ask uh, how many gold medals uh, did Team GP win at the last uh, Olympics? Okay, so this is going to test a number of things. Firstly, uh, it's going to test some contextual awareness, like what is the last Olympics? Yes, that is training data that you probably find in even, a, obviously because the Olympics was a while ago, you'd find that in um, old uh, training data in old LLMs. But the point is, it's going to return this and it's gonna give citations and it's gonna give all of this additional information. So if we click on here, we can see, okay, cool. It links through to Wikipedia. So one of the strengths is citations. And of course the other strengths is that you hope that it's gonna return immediate information. And also if you look through the API documentation, you can get follow up questions. I think we're gonna just explore all of that in this video. So. Uh, let's dive into the documentation, which looks remarkably similar to OpenAI. This is fairly standard for all the LLM interactions we've at least explored on this channel, which is that you have a series of messages. So we're going to take this and put it into our bubble app. So here's my bubble app. It's a demo app that I've used plenty of times and I'm gonna go into the API connector and scroll all the way down and add in a new API. You can just get a taste of all of the content that we've created in the past. If you wanna explore all of that, there's a link down in the description. Um, but let's add in perplexity. Okay, and then we'll go back to the documentation. So we have to say authorization bearer token in the header, uh, and we're sending a post request, and here is our endpoint. Uh, bubble now defaults content type application JSON, so we don't need to manually add that in. So let's go ahead here and um, we'll, we'll say uh, ask a question. And this is an action because we want to run this from within a workflow and like I said a moment ago it's post and there's the endpoint. I'm then going to go into my perplexity account and generate an API key. I will of course be deleting this before releasing this video. Uh, and that goes in private key in header all right, so I have to write in bearer. Now, is it capitalized? Let's go back to the documentation. It is capitalized. So in here, I would write bearer and paste in my API key. Let's go back to the documentation because now we need to add in the data section or the body section of the call. So I'm gonna copy everything that's here and we'll just thin it out once we get it into the bubble API connector. Paste that in. Um, okay, so we'll use Sonar, that's the base model that's meant to be super quick, also more uh, ex uh, less expensive. Um, and we'll leave the system message in. Here's the bit that we want to make dynamic. Uh, max tokens, we'll get rid of that. Um, we'll also, uh, so they've got a search domain filter, we'll get rid of that. Um, and return images, false, that's fine. Uh, recency filter, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's have a look at how they've written that up um, in the documentation. Uh, return search results within a specific interval. Oh, so cool. So they're really leaning into the fact that this, that they're telling you that this is better than the results you could get from Google because Google is still at its heart keyword based, whereas this is gonna be semantic, meaning it takes the meaning of the query, it takes a question rather than like a, a keyword cluster. In fact, this is what I thought Ask Jeeves would have been like all of those years ago. Um, so let's dive back into the API connector uh, and I think we'll just leave everything as is and we'll initialize. And this is our way of uh, checking that there are no mistakes, but also training bubble on the structure of the response that comes back. Let's initialize our call. If you don't get an error right away, that probably means there's not a JSON mistake. 
and we get back our content, perfect, just like that. We get back our citations, and then this choices structure here is very common for what you would expect from OpenAI or Claude, um, but here is our answer. Uh, the Milky Way, cool, 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 billions of stars. It even adds a little bit of markdown, uh, and you can see it adds in the citations, linking back to the one, two, three, four citations we've got there. So I'm gonna click save. That's perfect, and we'll just make this bit now dynamic because we want to be able to insert data from a page or use it and ask a question. Uh, and of course, this is a very simple implementation. If you were, if you already have like OpenAI doing a chat thing, and you still want it to bring in real-world knowledge, you can always add this in as an additional data source that still goes through OpenAI or Claude. Um, but let's make this dynamic. So we'll call this question. Notice that I removed the speech marks. Uh, and then if I needed to reinitialize it here, I'd have to add the speech marks and a question, the how big is the sun? I need to add it back in there. That's because I'm gonna JSON save it in the workflow. Right, let's create a new page and get the basic UI uh, to in place for this. So perplexity sonar demo, and this is not a lesson in UI design. Um, I'm even going to use a fixed layout because it's quick. Obviously, you wouldn't use a fixed layout. Uh, you'd be using rows and columns in the production app. Uh, so let's add in a button and we'll say uh, ask perplexity sonar. And we'll add in a multi line input. This will be our question. So we'll say ask your question here. And uh, then we need to show a response. And I'm really gonna push the boat out here. We're gonna show the text response, that's the chat message, and we're gonna show the citations. So uh, let's, let's do this in a slightly different way. In fact, let's add in a group. And uh, I think that I can now make this group a, uh, or maybe it needs to be data. Ask a question, ask a question result. Oh, I, I've done too many demo demos with apps like this. It's now getting confusing um, with perplexity. Okay, that's just gonna make it a little bit clearer. Basically what I'm doing is I'm preparing a place to put the data and then display the data. Uh, so I'm not saving it to the database. It's just kind of uh, transient while the user's on the page. Uh, so I can now, which one is it? It is, uh, would I need to reinitialize it? Oh, let's go back, just in case. Uh, right, ask questions with perplexity. Let's reinitialize it. Uh, I'm basically just trying to match what's in the API connector. Uh, so with here on the page, I think I would need to set it as data for that. Well, maybe not. Uh, I'm going to assume it's just that. Right, look, did we come clear? Maybe I need to do it a different way. Um, so we'll add in a workflow. And here's where we ask the question. So I'm going to go for perplexity and say ask question with perplexity. And then I take the multi line input, make it JSON safe value JSON safe remember that so that's going to put the speech marks back in around the outside and it's going to ensure that any pesky punctuation that could cause a syntax error is covered this is now maybe experimental for me uh, so uh, the results is it going to take that uh, there we go okay so let me go back a step because it'll just show you what's gone on there Right, my, my challenge was I've got too many things going on in the API connector. I don't know what uh, data type to put into the group. But it's, I just need to have the data type that is the response coming back from perplexity. Uh, so what I can do instead is I'll say, here's what it looks like. And then I just change the group to that. So it's ask, yeah, ask questions with perplexity. And so what that's done is it's changed this. Doesn't look any different, but it's gone blue, so I'm gonna work with that. The reason I've done that is because that's gonna put all of their response in here, 
and just make it a little bit easier to work with. Now I could use a custom state, uh, but now I can just say groups and now I've got access to everything that comes back from the AI. Uh, from perplexity. So I say choices, first item. It's choices because you can ask for more than one version of the response. We are just asking for one, so it's one out of one uh, content. So that's the text that comes back. What about the citation? So I could do that with a repeating group and I could then add um, oh that's actually going to be a little bit more tricky. So I, I, if I go through this route, citations, and change it to text. Okay, cool. It's just a list of text. Excellent. Uh, not limit it to four. Make this full width. Just make it a little bit more tidy. Twenty one. Add in a text label. So this will print each of the citations, which is just text. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, let's preview. So let's ask a question. Um, what is Planet No Code's most recent video? Now this will be interesting because obviously Google owns YouTube. We'll just see what happens here. Uh, ask Perplexity Sonar. So the green bar is going across the top uh, and it can't find it. And it's okay. So what you're seeing here is that it is, oh no, that's relevant. That really is one of our most recent videos. But it because it's, it's taken the semantic meaning of planet. It's basically found space stuff. So let's just ask a, a better question. Um, something really relevant, more recent. Uh, we could say, uh, what are the best uh, takeaways in London in 2025? Cool, and so here we go, we get our results and we can see that it is trained on recent data, you know, articles published only in the last month. So there you go, that's how you can use Perplexity Sonar to add real world, real time, really relevant search results into an app you're building, and in this case, we're building with bubble.io.